new monolith. Who dis? <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are going to unbox and build the new Necron Monolith today for Warhammer 40K. And I'll, of course, I'll compare it to all the other uh, big Necron kits we've uh, already assembled up to date here, and give you, you know, some thoughts on gotchas and the design. And I'm sure I'll say all sorts of dumb things. So, so let's start it out. So, $170 US. Of course, you can always get your uh, hobbies for less from Dicehead.com, Amazon, or hopefully your local retailer, which can discount up to 15%. That's one five percent. Now, this box is a chunk. Uh, I can't remember a box this big. I guess the Baneblade box is this big when they re-released it mm, not so long ago. I can't even remember to be quite honest. But um, it's this is a big, big kit. Like there's a lot of identical sprues in here, and then there's a couple of like habsies. Uh, for I think this thing and also this thing right here if I remember correctly from uh, the site now I, I won't lie to you. Uh, you know the monolith has been around for a very long time I remember buying it in 2002 or 2003 and putting it together and it was like 50 bucks Like I'm not even lying like I don't know why it's $170 even by GW standards. That seems a little high um, I mean, maybe they're looking at how many people will purchase this it is a Lord of War it's like 370 points. I think you can upgrade it to the death rays for like an extra five or something. But um, maybe they're just looking at that. Like, hey, here's our forecast. You know, business stuff we talked about in the past. I, I just I just don't know. Maybe because of the, you know, the sprues, like how many sprues you get. Because this size kit is a Bane Blade and a Bane Blade does go for, what, $160, $170 now as well. So I kind of get that. I, I get the standard. But it's just really hard to swallow, I guess. Like I get the business side of it, but as a consumer, I'm like, hey, I remember buying that for 50 bucks. Like, you know, it's just it's it's just a feel badsy. I feel like, you know, they you can talk about it for days. You know, hobbies cost money. I get it, but it's just one of those things where you're like, gosh, how many do I really even need? Or you know, am I gonna try to find a used one on eBay or something like that? So inside of it, you're gonna get the instructions, and we'll go over that um, probably way too uh, in depth here in a few minutes. Uh, the sprue wise, you're going to get two of the same sprues for the sides and the in stone, uh, inside blackstone uh, kind of accessories. I do like, you know, I like how this model is, like how it's presented, how it's concept, it's, it's format, it's composition, you know, sort of type deal. And then two other identical sprues that are going to make up like the center power of dilithium crystals and, you know, the power source up here and then the other halves of the blackstone stuff. And then you're going to get that kind of the accessory type sprue, which is going to probably attach. If I'm looking at this, you got the steps, you got the little Necron and the portal out the front. And that's really cool that GW did this. I like this in the previews because we used to do this back in the day. And I say back in the day, like I'm really old and I've been doing this forever, but I kind of have. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but we would cut a Necron warrior in half. Like I literally took one and I took a bone saw and I cut him in half. And I glued him to the monolith portal to make it look like he was stepping through. And a lot, it wasn't just me. A lot of folks did it. And it looked cool. And it's really neat to see GW kind of do something similar to kind of, you know, take notice of the way people used to uh, do their conversions and their, you know, customizations way back in the day. And then kind of give it to us so like ready to go, which I thought was uh, pretty neat. You can also just do the regular energy if you don't want to mess around with the little wa warrior. But uh, it looks pretty neat. And then there's the back energy source. It looks like that uh, little sentinel that's like uh, the world keeper kind of spinning his little web of, of doom on the uh, on the monolith power source. Uh, and then it's a 160 base, it looks like. Well, we'll find out here in a second. And it's got the little uh, repulsor tank flippy floppy thing where you can kind of twist it and it does a gangster lean or it does like a kind of like it's a coughing uh, sort of type deal. So that's, that's cool to see. So some interesting dynamics in here and I'm sure we'll see where it attaches to this. So let's zoom in and take a look at the instructions. So here we go. Uh, sprue wise, we already saw two of these, two of these accessory, accessory, boom, 160 indeed. And then you've got options, uh, 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 options. And I already know I'm gonna assemble this with the death rays because this is how the models used to be back in the day. Remember they, they had little plastic uh, green rods you would insert into this. So this looks way too close to the old monolith. So say, so, eh, no, nope, we're gonna do this way for sure. And if we can make both, we'll, we'll make both. So here is how it starts. So yep, those two interior dilithium crystal kind of power source things right here. 
uh, kind of go together. It looks like supporting beam, no big deal. And then the armor plate kind of sandwiches on there, a bottom cap of some sort. Oh, it's got the little dashes. So that's where that little twisty, twisty, uh, flippy floppy thing goes on. So you can rotate your monolith. And you know, you won't even see this if it's glued down to the base. So that's pretty interesting. Um, looks like some thrusters go on to that. Looks like a Christmas tree at this point. And then you've got crazy scarab spinning his, we his web of doom. Or is this a, I guess this is more of a can canoptic wraith or I don't know. Either way. Uh, it's got some pincers and a little sword. Yeah, this is more like the Wraith kit, to be honest. That looks pretty neat. And then he attaches onto here. His little tail bit goes on there. Uh, he's got, oh, look at that. Say hello to his little friend. He's got a little pew pew laser. Or I don't think he has extra attack, so I don't know. Maybe that's a focus, sir. He's got the three way, the three way focus on the little uh, power supply there. So let's take a look. So this times four. Here is the lasers or the death ray and then the gauze super flare whatever it's called it does not look like you can nope so this one while easier to build it looks like boom boom and then the cap goes on to it these are not interchangeable but they are movable so this one has a lot more parts it looks like a miniaturized version of the death ray from the night scythe kit um but you cannot magnetize them even though they lock in, but that one's already locked in as part of the rotating barrel. So once you figure out which one you're gonna do, and honestly, it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, this is an upgrade, but it's just one of those things like, do you put smoke launchers on your, and then if you have smoke launchers, I guess it's a strat now. Do you, you know, like, is it one of those things that you have to be 100% WYSIWYG on? I don't know. That's up for debate, but I know, you know, my circle is just kind of playing casually and maybe a tournament here and there, like small scale. Eh, you know, hey, if they want me to play with it that way, that's cool. Just check with the TO. So these are going to actually lock in to the front armor piece and then it looks like it caps around the corner. Yep, so it caps around the corner right here and then the Blackstone Fortress bits go into the corner and there's some interior detail work which looks pretty neat. So those lock in right there. This is a lot of surface. Remember, you're supposed to mate these to the surface right here, everything in yellow. So that's interesting. And then some more of that in the corners, okay. And then you've got your assembly. You snap, uh, just glue them together. It looks like these are nice big chunky peg holes. So it looks like they'll probably hold. So at that point, you're probably gonna have a monolith, which is, you know, this is very similar to how it went together back in the day where you would, you literally just got four sides. It was completely hollow in the middle and you had a top and a bottom and then it had the support uh, fins, if you want to call them that, on the on there as well. So this, I like the composition of this, that it's way more open, like open floor plan and got a lot going on. And then at this point, you choose whether you want the Necron coming out of the Infinity Portal or just normal Infinity Portal. And you got to put together the Steppies, uh, just like it looks like the Silent King, very similar to that. You figure out, you just got to figure out, go by the parts but I'm sure they match up to a specific underneath little uh, hook. Okay, so there's the, yeah, and you can see right here, you can either get your gangster lane on or off as you lock it into that. Now, I wouldn't do that until you paint the base, but it's definitely worth noting that you are gonna have to uh, glue that down to the base. I would almost magnetize that. I haven't magnetized these yet, but let's take a look at that since we got it here somewhere close. Yeah, it looks like it would be easy to magnetize because you could put a magnet these are gonna snap off and rotate in together. So as long as you glue this down uh, here, and then these are your nubs, so that's actually gonna to go to the top, you will be able to put a magnet in this at the top, which would be pretty easy. And that almost looks like a five, five sixteenths. I would, I would guess that that's a five sixteenths inch in diameter right there. Uh, very close to it. So you could probably just slap a magnet in there and a magnet on the bottom. And then you could also additionally put extra magnets in the corners, like maybe some quarter inch, and then put those on the bottom of your monolith as well too, because let's take a look at those. Yeah, so here's the plate. So this is the part that's gonna face down that actually attaches to that. So you could put magnets, glue them right inside of this and use some of this plastic putty just to lock them in because this stuff gets hard as, hard as stone. Where is my, oh, there it is. My, 
my jar of supplies is way too thick. All right, so use a little plastic putty to lock it down. I'm probably not gonna do that for this just because it's easy to talk out and just kind of talk about it. And it's one of those things that's not gonna super affect the build or anything like that. But if I was gonna magnetize that, I would definitely start because you need to do that before you glue this plate. It looks like it glues up into the superstructure here. So just some food for thought right there, but it would be pretty neat. Uh, to magnetize that. So that's everything I'm seeing right here. Let's take a look at the sprues. Okay, so these are pretty chonky to be quite honest. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of plastic. Now, you can see pretty much you have the tops and then here, a lot of it is the bottom. So you're not gonna have as many seam lines to kind of clean off, but it does look like all your wiring and stuff is right on this plane. So you will have to scrape all those off, which is a little unfortunate because that's a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Um, but I get it, you know, GW, it's hard to kind of do that easier to build on everything, but it looks like for the most part, you won't have, oh, that's going to be a pain on those little doomsday lasers right there, but it is what it is. So the detail is nice here and it looks like this goes inside. Why is there two rando wires going out like that? Hmm. I wonder what that's all about. I wonder where, oh, because on the other side, there will be two of the same and then I'll have, so it'll have three. I see, okay, so, so those will hook into something. And then what's the other piece? So here's the monolith walls, so to speak. And this is big chunky. Yeah, look at those recesses. Like that's crazy that those nubs are gonna lock into there. And that would hold a lot of weight. So I could see it totally happening. And then here's the little support uh, pieces for the Blackstone. They lock in somehow, I forget how, but, oh, right here, cause left and right halves. So you're not gonna have a lot of flash to trim off the superstructure because it looks like it's all on that plane. Oh, you will on here, on these fins. There'll be a lot on that, but no big deal there. That's pretty neat. And then accessory wise, you're gonna have, yep, all, uh, all the arms and everything are gonna need to be trimmed to flash. And I lost the other sprue, where is it? Up oh, there it is. And this was the other sprue with uh, that piece right there. So the detail is good. I'm more worried about how easy this guy's gonna go together coming out of the portal, but it looks like the your your smaller detail stuff and some of your wiring is definitely gonna have to get trimmed to flash, unfortunately. But all right, well, let's uh, trim it all up and get it together. Boom, we got a monolith. So I won't lie, <laughs> I say that a lot, but I try not to. This is, this is very heavy. This for being just plastic, this is actually pretty chonky and I was like, I was kind of carrying it over uh, to the table here and I was like, holy cow, this is kind of heavy. So I went and grabbed the Bane Blade uh, just to see how much heavier a Bane Blade is than this. And I, I honestly think it's heavier than this Bane Blade to be quite honest. Uh, this is kind of crazy. Like we compared it to the Bane Blade price wise and such. And obviously size wise, you know, it's, it's very similar if you put it like sideways like this, but this is a lot of material in here and it's really cool. Like I said, the composition, how it's kind of like open floor plan and you can kind of see all up in there and everything and, you know, stuff around the corner. Um, maybe not glue that guy down so you could paint the front a little easier. I mean, he just really is only glued in at like three points. Those little, um, power supply crystal things checking his chakra and you know right here in the middle so i mean you could in theory just keep them off and it wouldn't be that big of a deal it's a little i mean for the most part these little lasers kind of lock in and then they move um and they got you know pretty decent range of motion and they're not like fixed or anything it's just a little like to put glue around there and i use for everything on here believe it or not i use the super thin uh tamiya glue and i mean this this, this glue right here is a champ and I was able to put a couple coats on there because it kind of re-energizes itself. Sometimes it dries like while you're coating it and there was a lot of surface area to kind of glue it down to. But it, what it does is it gets very strong and then you can kind of come back and add some in the gaps, like any little gaps that you might've missed that you're trying to line things up. That's where it really, really helps. And kind of once you squish them together, you can kind of wipe it off with a little paper towel, a little moist paper towel and it'll come right off. Now you see these gouges right here that was mostly because of the sprue was right there. And I wanted to try to get it as flat as possible so it would attach, but I, I'm i not sure I, I dug it out too far. I, I don't know what happened here to be quite honest, but those are exactly where the sprues were. So I'm almost wondering if 
I went too far down with it or what, but I could patch that with a little plastic putty. Like I said, it would get super hard um, really quick in about three hours and then just, you know, be able to just kind of wipe it away or I could wipe it away while it was wet and it wouldn't, I wouldn't even have to come back and bother with it. But either way, um, that gapping right there is because either I was stupid and overcompensated or I don't think that was a design flaw with the, the kit itself, but everything else I love about it. I think, um, you know, it goes together pretty well. You just got to watch all your, you know, your chunks and getting everything nice. Those, those are noticeable, but they're nice and flat, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. So I think maybe I tricked myself up here as well, but you are going to have to trim a decent amount of flash. You can see some right there on the fin work, which is uh, probably the only thing visible that you need to super worry about, to be quite honest. And then up top here, you can see there's a, there's a split in the crystal but that is all filled in with some of that super thin glue. But I think size wise, you know, it definitely makes sense. This is literally the same size as the old monolith. Like it, there's, I think it's the same exact footprint, but you can see just like we saw with that composition picture, the, the sizing is exactly like it was with that big composition picture. It's, you know, roughly the monolith size and then everything else just kind of comes into play here as well, like size wise that, that we expected. Um, no super big surprises here. It didn't take like super crazy to build. I think maybe cutting everything out probably took about the same amount of time to assemble. So you're probably talking about an hour or two, give or take, um, total, like, uh, to get both halves done. So I would say it didn't take three hours. It probably took about two, two and a half ish to get this together, which is kind of exciting when you think about it. Like this is a lot of detail and there's a lot going on to, you know, bang on a project like this in about two hours. Um, and still mostly getting all the, the flash and the trim and everything. Very straightforward and very revolutionary uh, design work by Games Workshop. It's deceptively, deceptively complex, but yet very simple. And I like it. And I think this, you know, besides the price, I think this is probably, you know, a, a very... Um, one of the best kits G-Dub has put out, both on the composition, assembly, uh, ease of uh, completion... You know, all of those things out there that, that we really look for, you know, as as miniature hobbyists, like, hey, why do I want this? Okay, how hard is it going to be to put together? Is it good in game? How many do I need? I think it checks all those boxes except for, holy crap, it's $170. You know what I'm saying? So that's about it. That's about all I got to say. That was probably way too much. And thanks for hanging in there with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget, you can always get your hobbies for less from Dicehead.com, Amazon, and you know we'll have links to all that in the description and in the comments, and of course, your local game store. But before you jump over there, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.